One American in three can trace his lineage to a few acres of sandy fill in New York Harbor, Ellis Island, where immigrants entered our country by the millions yearning to be breathe free. Ellis Island deserves better treatment than it's received in recent years. Now there is a move to make amends, and Jerry Lande fills us in with a byline report. For 30 years, Ellis Island has been dying, and few have mourned. The old government reception center on Ellis Island was the focus of the greatest migration in history, the long march that shaped the nation. Along with their dreams and their fears, they brought in only what their hands and pockets could hold. Earlier in the century, this complex of hearing and examination and baggage rooms, dorms, a hospital and ticket depot, once processed and cleared as many as 5,000 a day. World War, restrictive immigration policy, and the advent of air travel turned Ellis into a white elephant. In 1954, the government declared Ellis Island to be excess property, and it was left to the ghosts to neglect and decay. A decade later, President Johnson recognized it as a national historic landmark, but Congress provided no money to preserve it. The island became a monument to monumental oversight a house haunted by the ghosts of pilgrims passing through. Some immigrants have recorded their memories for history. We took a ferry. Yes, we took a ferry, and we did take a ferry to Ellis Island, yes. And I remember that everybody was given a whole cake of soap and a towel. And of course, soap was very scarce in France, and I just couldn't believe it. You know, every day a whole cake of soap, it sounded fantastic. First meal, we got fish and milk, big pitches of milk, and the white bread. The first time I see the white bread and the butter. And there was so much milk, and I drink it so much because we didn't have enough milk in my country, you know. Seeing the Statue of Liberty so close by, you know, we had a gorgeous view out of our windows of the Statue of Liberty. And then sitting there on Ellis Island and being unable to get on land. Mrs. Irene Engelman spent 11 anguish days awaiting clearance after she fled war-torn Europe back in 1940. Now, on my invitation, she was making a return pilgrimage with her husband, Edmund, for the first time in four decades. Wow, decayed. Unbelievable what this looks like. I wish it was preserved. It represents so much of the um, humanity that has been brought into the United States. When I say humanity, I don't mean only people, but also whatever they represented and whatever they have brought along with them. And <clears throat> historically, we cannot ignore that. We just can't ignore that. If Lee Iacocca, the chairman of Chrysler, prevails, America will underwrite a new era for Ellis Island. He has a personal stake. My father came through as a boy of 12 from Italy in 1902. Uh, he was here about 18 years, served in the war, became a citizen, went back and married my mother, who was 17 years old at the time, and in 1921 she came through. Uh, she should have made it to that hospital, by the way, because she had typhoid fever, but he passed her off as being seasick. Iacocca is not only trying to save Chrysler, he is chairman of a commission appointed by President Reagan to salvage the grandeur and meaning of Ellis. And to that end, he is now organizing the effort to raise $230 million, a dollar for every living American. This great hall and environs would become a living museum to the immigrant experience. A commercial consortium wants to house an international conference center and hotel inside the old building complex on the other wing of the island. $25 million would go toward a structural and cosmetic overhaul of the Statue of Liberty. The ongoing project would be phased to the statue's centennial celebration on July 4, 1986, and the 100th birthday of Ellis six years later. How does a Detroit marketing man envision raising $230 million in times like these and without any government funds? Big corporations uh, might give us 10 million each, 10 of the biggest, that's $100 million. But to me, uh, I'd rather 100 million people that identify with it give me a buck, frankly. When they arrived here, the foreigner's goal was to assimilate, to put the immigrant experience behind them and become American. That perhaps is one reason why we put Ellis behind us. A popular reaffirmation of the immigrant tradition can bring the island back to life. Jerry Landay is with us. Why has it been so neglected? 
it's it's a fascinating mystery to me. I mean, here immigration is the central dynamic, Bill, of, of this country. We like to talk about the Indians as being the only Native Americans, and yet, of course, they migrated from Siberia about 10,000 years ago. Uh, the ambivalence that I that I alluded to at the in the closing moment of the piece, I think, is one reason. People came here to assimilate and to become American, mm -hmm. and they put their foreign identity behind them. The other thing is, I think modern America tends not to have a past. It doesn't spend a lot of time thinking about its history. And yet it was that history that impelled that greatest migration in history of up to 17 million people. And I think the way we decide to treat Ellis is the way we're going to decide to treat the United States of America. Your parents came through. What do they remember as the immigrant experience? Ah, that ties into what I just was talking about. They never talked about it. And, you know, interestingly enough, uh, we think of Ellis as uh, the gateway to freedom. In fact, it was called by many immigrants the Island of Tears because of the, the, the human drama that, that surrounded it. I mean, you arrived there, you didn't know the language, you, take, you took the big throw, you paid 40 to $60 for your passage, you rolled around in airless steerage down in the bowels of the ship, you didn't know the language, somebody was going to tell you for the rest of your life how you spelled your name, you didn't know if somebody was waiting on shore, you didn't know if you'd be declared indigent or, uh, or uh, ill and sent back. And, uh, I mean, this to me was a commitment to raw courage, uh, such as uh, we don't know. Quite a feeling, impressive. Thank you for your byline report, Jerry Landay. Thanks for coming in.